Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. What am I doing, you ask? As someone who has thousands of hours in PvP as a hunter, I decided to create a guide to help anyone looking to master the hunter class. This guide will be covering everything from mobility and movement tips, to subclass breakdowns, to the best exotics for each subclass, and then the do's and don'ts of being a hunter. Yes, guys, this is gonna be a long video, but it's 100% worth it. Also, in this video, we have two special guests, two other YouTubers, so be ready for that. Also, if you have some hunter experience, feel free to skip around the video to the sections that pertain to you. You can find each section in the description and timeline below. But with that, grab a cup of coffee or your favorite energy drink, hashtag cracked out of my mind. Let's do this. Hunters are known for their incredible jumping ability, from using it to fly around the map at Mach 10 speed to breaking ankles of their enemies. But what really is the secret behind it? What if I told you that it all falls back on the jump you choose? Regardless of the subclass you choose, each hunter subclass has three different jumps. You can either choose between high jump, strafe jump, or triple jump. As someone who spends more time in PvP than with his own family, let me break down each jump with its viability in PvP. For the high jump, I want you to think of it as an extremely high jump. Personally, I find it very limited in the PvP environment. It might be nice for PvE, but for PvP, it can leave you too exposed and potentially lead you to unnecessary deaths. Next, we have the strafe jump. To some people, this is the superior jump. This jump gives the wielder the ability to change direction of your jump in mid-air. But it also has the ability to propel you forward. Lastly, we have the triple jump, which is one of my personal favorite when I play console. Think of this one as a bunch of small jumps, three to be exact. But in a game like Destiny, this jump can feel a bit slow and underperforming. But don't quickly ride off the triple jump just like that. The triple jump isn't bad in close proximity style fighting, essentially in maps such as Anomaly or Endless Veil. Vale, one of the better benefits from this jump is the low amount of exposure. If you're really looking to get the most out of PvP as a hunter, I highly recommend you use and master the strafe jump. Being able to change your direction of movement in mid-air is one of the best abilities that any hunter can have on their tool belt. Now, using your jump is a great way to boost your forward momentum, and out of the three jumps, strafe will give you the biggest boost in this department. By using your jump to propel you forward, this will allow you to move around the map much faster than you would if you just normally sprinted. Let's talk about movement exotics, especially one that can amplify the strafe and triple jump. When it comes to exotics, each character has an exotic pair of boots that'll boost their movement. For Titans, you have the Dune Marchers. For Warlocks, you have the Transversive Steps. And for Hunters, you have my personal favorite, the Stompies. Now, the question comes up, do I need to use the Stompies? And it's a simple answer. No, you don't need to use the Stompies. Yes, they do amplify your movement. And this is just a demonstration on how I move around the map with and without stompies as you can tell i move around the map much faster when i have stompies on now let's get into some tips and tricks for movement i'm sure you've heard the term skating you've heard warlock skating and you've heard titan skating but let me reassure you that hunters do have their own style of skating but it requires low ceilings now let me begin by demonstrating the hunter skating Essentially, it requires your character to use low ceilings to propel yourself back to the ground. To put it in more simplistic terms, you're going to want to ping pong yourself using the ceiling and the floor. I know this looks pretty funny and hear me out, your hunter will not get a concussion. But why is this movement important? Well, this is going to allow you to move around the map much quicker. Being first to any power position in any game mode is crucial. Being able to get in position before your enemies can be the reason you win a trials match or a competitive match. This is why you want to move fast. But you can always use hunter skating as a way to flank your enemies and catch them off guard. Lastly, have you ever been critically wounded? You're one shot from dying. You can use hunter skating as a way to escape from danger. Now, before we get into some movement tips, let's talk about the class ability. And I'll keep this one short. The hunter has two dodge options. You can either use gambler's dodge or marksman dodge. Both are gonna have their benefits when it comes to gunfights and engagements, but only one has what I like to call the survivability benefit. Look, this is my enemy using marksman dodge. As you can tell, they don't really go anywhere and they can be easily killed out of it. Now, this is my enemy using gambler's dodge. As you can tell, they are now a much harder target to kill. Also, keep in mind that when you use gambler's dodge, if you dodge near an enemy, you'll get a fully charged melee. And if you use Marksman's Dodge, you'll only reload your current weapon. 
But that's not the only benefit. With Gambler's Dodge, you can now peek into areas that are congested. And if it seems like an unwinnable fight, you can now use your dodge ability to escape that engagement. Pretty much, it's your get out of jail free card. All right, now that we've got our basics out of the way, we got the basic jump out of the way, we got our dodge out of the way, let's get into some tips and tricks for using the hunter speed, agility, and mobility. One of the easiest tactics that everyone should learn right away is learning how to bait your enemy. Use the bait tactic. This tactic can be done by having your enemy push you through a doorway while you're above their head. You might be asking, All right, smart guy. How do I bait my enemy? You can do this easily. You can always ping their radar by getting close to them, and this will cause them to run towards you. Or you can always take a little bit of damage, peek out, take some damage. This will cause them to run after you because they'll be more aggressive. And once your enemy approaches the doorway, this is where you want to jump and stay above the doorway. Before you start falling down to land right in front of the door, you want to use your second jump. This will allow you to stay in the air a little bit longer. Once your enemy pushes out that doorway, this is where you want to take advantage of them and secure the kill. If done properly, congratulations, you just mastered the bait. Now, keep in mind that timing is everything. You don't want to jump too soon or you'll catch yourself falling in front of your enemy and fail to bait them. At the end of the day, we all just want to master this, right? Moving on, let's talk about breaking line of sight and using the air attack to defeat your enemy. Next time you catch yourself in a duel, Try using your dodge to get behind a piece of cover. At this time, try jumping over that cover and attack your enemy. This works especially well with weapons with Icarus. Now, there are a few more movement tips that we can get into in this video, but the ones that we covered today are going to be the ones I use in almost every game. But I will be linking another Hunter video down below, so check that one out. But let's get into the subclass breakdown. Now that we have the mechanics out of the way, how can we use those with our subclasses and their abilities? Well, let's get right into our Void subclass. Before we get into the subclass trees, let's take a look at the grenade abilities and see which one you should be using. For the Void subclass, you're going to have three different options. You're going to have the Vortex Grenade. Essentially, this is a grenade that creates a sphere of damage. Enemies can escape this grenade fairly well, but if you place it strategically on top of your enemy, you can deal a significant amount of damage, which makes this grenade great for beginning and ending engagements. Moving on, we have the spike grenades, which is by far one of my favorite grenades to use. But if you're terrible at geometry, then you might want to stay away from these grenades. But these grenades can be used in a lot of different situations. Placing them behind your enemy, easy. Placing them on the side of your enemy, easy. They can be used as a way to seal off your enemy from approaching you or from retreating. Keep in mind that out of the three void grenades, these can be easily destroyed by dealing damage to them. Now, our last grenade we have is the Void Wall, which when used, this creates a horizontal wall of burning void. This one is very deadly since if your enemies fail to escape in the right direction, there's a chance they'll be caught in the horizontal burn. But what really makes the Void Grenades just deadly in general? Well, if you use them in combination with the Night Stalker melee ability, this is what we in the PvP world call the Wombo, the Wombo Combo. 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 For those who are unaware, the Night Stalker melee ability is a smoke bomb, but we're going to get more into that when we do the complete breakdown. Now, for the Hunter Void subclass, this consists of three different ability trees. We have Wave the Trapper, Wave the Wraith, and Wave the Pathfinder. Each one of these subclass have very deadly tool belts, but each tool belt functions in a different way. Starting off, we have Wave the Trapper, more commonly known as the Invisible Hunter everyone gets pissed about. Now, if you didn't know this, this subclass ability allows you to go invis, which is great for sneaking up on your enemies. This ability is called Vanishing Step, which lasts 4 seconds. This subclass has an interesting tool belt. The melee smoke bomb is unique since it sticks to surfaces and will work in two ways. It'll show up on your enemy's radar as an enemy, and once the enemy detonates it, it will ensnare them in smoke, slowing them down and disorienting them. Earlier, we talked about baiting your enemy, and one of the best ways you can do it is by pinging your radar. Now, combining that with the Wave the Trapper subclass, this will allow you to trick your target with a smoke bomb. It is a great way to bait them through a doorway and into your location, and utilizing Vanishing Step can amplify this tactic. Earlier, we talked about breaking line of sight and jumping to the air to attack your target. Well, this class does that, but now add in these factors into the equation. You have to dodge to break line of sight, but now add in the invisibility. But let's not forget if you're using Gambler's Dodge, you now have a fully charged melee, which you can use to ensnare your target in smoke. 
allowing you to capitalize on your target by using your full axis of your tool belt, kind of like trapping your enemy. You see what I did there? Wave the trapper. It's a subclass name. Eh, eh, no, nobody. Okay, moving on. Now, before we get into the super, for those of you who like to fully maximize your radar, the way of the trapper has the perk Keen Scout, which provides an advanced radar. And as you can tell, Keen Scout provides a bit more detail to the radar, which can be used to determine your enemy's position. Now, Way of the Trapper has a great super when it comes to fighting other supers. Well, the reason for that is because it suppresses other supers. When using Way of the Trapper, you can now fire one arrow, which will suppress your target. Now, a lot of people get confused. They think that once you fire the arrow, it will automatically suppress the super. That's where you're wrong there. It doesn't. The reason for this is that the super still needs time to activate. See, when I fire the super, when no one is near it, it just sits there. Similar to your smoke bomb, it is set up to trap your enemy, but it still needs to be active. This can be done in two ways. You can either fire your weapon at the super orb and it will activate it, or your enemy has to walk by for it to activate. Overall, this is a great subclass, and if you're looking for an awesome exotic to pair with it, I would highly recommend something like the Gemini Jester, since when you dodge, you will take your enemy's radar, and why not be invis at the same time? Using your entire tool belt, along with Gemini Jester, it is a great way to take full advantage of this ability tree. With that, let's continue to our next ability tree, Way of the Pathfinder. This subclass has such an interesting tool belt that I'll only touch the surface of it. Why you ask? Because I plan on doing an entire video breakdown of just subclass alone and my favorite invisibility builds. So if you're new to the channel, you're enjoying the video so far, you might want to hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications. Now, unlike Way of the Trapper, your melee smoke bomb automatically detonates upon landing on a surface. But if you use it on yourself or your teammates, it will grant invisibility and grant the perk Heart of the Pack, which increases mobility, recovery, and resilience, which is extremely noticeable. Also, when you use your dodge ability with Way of the Pathfinder, you will not go invisible. I know, I know, I know, but come on, it would be completely broken if you did go invis. Now, this is where the subclass gets freaking amazing. Earlier, we talked about the term Wombo Combo. Well, this subclass is going to be the poster child for that term. With the perk Lockdown, your grenade effects last twice as long, and the perk Combat Provision, damaging enemies with grenades grants melee ability, you can really see the synergy from using grenades in succession with your melee ability. If you plan on using Way of the Pathfinder, I would highly suggest you start pairing your wombo combos together. Run a void wall along with a smoke bomb. Ensnare your enemies first in the smoke bomb and clean them up with the void wall. You'll see a lot of success from that combo alone. Now, this super is similar, but different. Rather than having one arrow that suppresses, you now fire multiple arrows. But wait, 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 wait. Slow down there. There's a few drawbacks to using this ability. Since you are firing multiple tethers, they are much weaker and the grab distance is much less. But what if I told you you're using this tether wrong? A lot of players, shoot, you can even put me in that category. A lot of players, when using this super as a way to kill multiple targets, they fail to aim the super properly. Did you know there's crosshairs? There are crosshairs on this super. Look at it right there, crosshairs. Overall, I think this is one of the most underrated ability trees for the hunter. And the reason for that is due to players not understanding how this ability tree works and its potential when it comes to using its tool belt. For this ability tree, one of my favorite exotics to use is the Ami Oculus. And that's going to be with the perk Beyond the Veil. You gain an additional smoke bomb charge and have damage resistance when invisible. If you're really looking to take advantage of the wombo combo or to make teammates invisible, then this is the exotic you want to use. Now, I saved the best for last when it comes to the ability trees. We have these Spectra Blades. And guys, there's one hunter in this entire world that scares the heck out of me. And that's Shadow. Middle Tree Night Stalker, often referred to as Spectral Blades, has an extremely powerful neutral game and one of the most powerful supers in the game. The Spectral Blades super allows you to go invisible and disappear from enemy radar. This super now takes slightly more damage than it used to, but I still find it to be very tanky and extremely maneuverable, if you know how to move with it correctly. I see tons of people just spamming the swipe light attack while on the ground, but you'll actually move much faster if you jump and then swipe in rapid succession. It's also worth pointing out that this super lasts a very long time if you stay invisible. You can afford to pop it and then wait for the perfect moment to attack, and you can even use the invisibility to go on an unexpected flank to surprise your opponents. The neutral game on this super is incredibly strong in part due to the perk called Flawless Execution. 
Crouching while getting a precision kill allows you to go invisible for a moderate duration and also see people through the walls for 3 seconds. As you might imagine, this is borderline overpowered for snipers and other precision weapons because you can pre-aim perfectly and then just shoot the instant your opponent becomes visible. Because this perk requires crouching to activate, it can be a little awkward, so I'd recommend either crouching towards the end of a primary fight, sliding, or a combination of both so you can maintain rapid movement and still activate the perk. Once you get used to it, Flawless Execution is insane and can give you an extraordinary advantage, especially in high stakes game modes like Trials of Osiris. The next part of the neutral game is the grenade and smoke. Personally, I prefer the void wall grenade, but all the options are somewhat viable. The grenade is best paired with the smoke bomb to create an extremely nasty trap that is difficult to escape. The smoke slows enemy movement while blinding them and dealing damage over time, so if you throw a grenade right after the smoke, your opponent can get stuck and melt it extremely fast. For dodge options, I definitely recommend using the Gambler's Dodge because you can use it to recharge your smoke bomb instantly, and as I just mentioned, it's incredibly powerful. It's also considerably more evasive and allows you to get out of situations where you've overextended. When it comes to exotics, you can really run whatever you want on this subclass, but if you know me, you know I'm a huge fan of the Dragon's Shadow. It reloads all your guns, gives bonus mobility, bonus weapon handling, and bonus reload simply for using your dodge. Stompies are of course everyone's go-to option at the moment, so those will work just fine as well. Kepri Sting is also a surprisingly strong option for this tree because if you throw your smoke, it will give you true sight on demand and you can recharge your smoke bomb by using your dodge. As Pattycakes mentioned in a recent video, you can also use the new stasis mod called Melee Kickstart to get your smokes recharged absurdly fast. Overall, the Way of the Wraith is definitely one of the best hunter subclasses in my opinion, and you can really annoy your opponents by going invisible and having wall hacks very frequently. Huge shout out to Shadow. He's one of the best Spectre Blades hunter in the game. He's always getting headshots. So if you enjoyed that, you might want to check out his YouTube channel. Links are going to be down below. But with that, let's get into the Solar subclass. For the Solar subclass, we're going to have Way of the Outlaw, Way of the Sharpshooter, and Way of a Thousand Cuts. But before we get into the subclass tips and tricks, let's talk about grenades. For the Solar subclass, we have the Trip Mine Grenade, which is a grenade that can stick to a surface and detonate when an enemy passes through it. In one of the most recent changes by Bungie, this grenade can now be attached to players' heads. This is what we like to call unicorning your enemy. Keep in mind that you can always shoot your trip mine while it's in the air. This is a pretty difficult task and I've only seen it completed by two other people, which is going to be Cami Cakes and Patty Cakes. Coincidence? I think not. Next we have the incendiary grenade. This is what I like to call the halo grenade. It's pretty basic, but it's extremely deadly. Think of this grenade as just a normal grenade. You can bounce it off the wall, you can throw it down a long hallway, and any targets affected by the explosion are dealt the initial damage and then have a lingering burn effect to them. Now, the last grenade we have on the list is the Swarm Grenade. Out of the three grenades, this one isn't as used as often, and for good reason, it lacks in two departments. It lacks in damage and blast radius. Unlike other solar grenades, if an enemy is hit with a swarm grenade, they'll begin to receive a small amount of damage, but they can easily run from this grenade and your damage will start lacking at that moment. Now let's get into the first ability tree we have for the solar subclass, and that is going to be Way of the Outlaw, aka the six shot golden gun. Top tree golden gun, as the name suggests, lets you live like an outlaw. You can truly experience the western cowboy fantasy with the six shooter golden gun super, which refunds a bullet for every kill that you make. The super is excellent for rapidly collecting as many kills as possible, but you do have to be careful about the damage falloff at extended ranges as well as the lack of damage resistance that you'd otherwise have on most of the other roaming supers. In the neutral game, you can embrace the darker side of being an outlaw, setting deadly traps for your enemies. Your melee ability is actually a baby trip mine which can stick to walls and do a little bit over 100 damage to anyone who touches it. In my opinion, the melee is most effectively used either for chip damage on an enemy who's hiding behind cover, or in a wombo combo with the actual trip mine. A pro tip here is that you can throw the melee first and then the trip mine, which is actually much faster than doing it the other way around. If you stack their damage together, you're going to get so many free kills, it's really fun. Of course, if you also pair this with the exotic gauntlet's young Ahamkara spine, your trip mines will do more damage with a much more generous explosion cone which makes them even more deadly. It will also significantly beef up their health, which makes them very difficult to destroy. And yes, Brave, before you panic about me recommending a different exotic, you can also run the Stompies on the top tree Goldie. This is going to be an excellent choice for getting 7th Columns with your Golden Gun high up in the sky. The other grenade choices have their uses as well. The Frag Grenade can delay your opponent's regeneration if you hit them with the Burn, and the Storm Grenade can be a lot of fun too since you can wombo combo it with the Throwing Knife. 
While we're talking about the neutral game, let's not forget about Chains of Woe on the Way of the Outlaw. To match the subclass name, this perk gives you Outlaw on all of your weapons. This is going to let you reload significantly faster after landing a precision kill. Pretty cool. With the faster reloads, it makes much more sense to run the Gambler Sodge option as the value of the Marksman Sodge is a little bit diminished. Also, the Gambler Sodge in my opinion has a much better animation for surviving those tricky situations and it can get you back those incredible trip my knives even faster. I'll leave it to Brave to tell you about all of the best hunter jumps, but before I go, let me challenge the viewers at home. If you want to become a true gunslinger, try throwing your trip mine and then shooting it out of the air to kill your opponents behind cover and earn some huge style points. Oh my gosh, is that over already? Felt like I was watching a montage. Guys, huge shout out to Patty Kicks. He's an amazing YouTuber. He hit 100,000 subscribers, so head over to his channel and give him a huge thanks for that part. But let's get into the next subclass, and that's going to be Way of the Sharpshooter. Unlike Way of the Outlaw, Way of the Sharpshooter is a three-shot golden gun, and the subclass favors precision. One of the best features about this ability tree is the ability Weighted Knife. It is a one-hit kill ability. You can really punish any player who dares to enter your vicinity. Also, each precision kill with this ability will fully grant you another fully charged melee ability. Now, don't get me wrong. As simplistic as the throwing knife looks, it's extremely difficult to land multiple knives over and over, but not impossible. And with some practice, anyone can master this ability. I personally like and dislike this ability when it comes to up close and personal gunfights. Because if you attempt to one hit kill your enemy with this ability and you miss, it can be the difference between you living and dying. I personally like using this ability when I catch my enemy off guard or if I have ample time to initiate the engagement with the knife ability, but I'm more hesitant to use this ability in a mid engagement area. Now still focusing on precision aim, one of the best features about this subclass is the perk practice makes perfect in which you enter a trance with a precision hit, reducing the cooldown of your super. This is such a great perk and I love pairing it with weapons such as the Vigilant Swing where you have the ability to land multiple headshots in a single burst. Side note for my controller players out there, if you plan on using this ability tree, try to find weapons that have a recoil that can be easily controlled which is going to allow you to land more headshots. But what if I told you that this ability tree has a lot of synergy in it? With the perk knock em down which increases weapon stability and handling with each precision kill, when you jump into the crucible and you're consistently getting headshots and activating knock them down, it can lead to getting more supers because of the perk practice makes perfect. Essentially, if you use this ability tree and you are accurate, the game is rewarding you with more super energy. Personally, if you plan on using this ability tree, you might want to focus on a more passive playstyle. And if you start to be pressed by enemies, you can always use your weighted knife to punish that target. As for exotics, one of my favorite exotics to use with this ability tree is going to be the Aphidious Faith. This one is going to grant you an additional throwing knife. So no worries if you miss one of your throwing knives, you'll have a second one ready to go. And if you land a kill with that throwing knife, this exotic armor will grant you two throwing knives per one charge. Now in all of my Master Series videos, I tend to leave one ability tree out. And the reason for that is because this next ability tree is not really viable. Now I'm not saying this next ability tree is complete trash, but compared to all the other ability trees, this one isn't as deadly and doesn't bring much to the table. And that ability tree is going to be way of a thousand cuts, aka the blade barrage. Unlike our other ability trees, this tree doesn't have a single knife, but a fan of knives. When using this ability tree, your character can throw a fan of flaming knives that burn your target on impact. All right, the drawback to this perk is that the knives are thrown in a fan motion. As you can tell, when you use this ability, you throw knives in a horizontal formation, which really leaves a lot of room for error. Yes, yes, there is a trick to using this melee ability where you can have your knives hit in a direct location, but consistently implementing that into your game might be a difficult task. Now, for the super, it's pretty cut and dry. Unlike the Golden Gun Super, rather than having a ability to roam around the map, you now have a more focused area ability in which when you use it, you vault into the air and unleash a volley of solar charge explosion knives. And when these knives hit your target, they'll cause your target to explode. Keep in mind that if you plan on using the super, try to avoid using your super in a confined space, since you will be limited to how far you can spread your super, and there is a possibility that you super can get stuck on a nearby surface. Ah, we've come to the final subclass of the video. And don't get me wrong, 
I saved the best for last. We have the Arc subclass. Now, before we get into the ability trees, let's talk about the grenades and how to get the most out of them. The first grenade on the list is one that I personally use most of the time. We have the Skip Grenade. This is a grenade that splits upon impact, creating multiple projectiles that seek enemies. Now, I know what you're thinking, Brave. How is this different from the Swarm Grenades? Can you see my diagram on screen? Think of that big dog as the Skip Grenades. All right, moving on. This grenade has a lot of different uses from attacking a sniper who's hard scoping a lane to pushing your enemy out of cover and into danger to even cleaning up enemies who are trying to escape from you. The only drawback to this grenade is that it can have a mind of its own. There are a handful of times where I throw this grenade and it does the complete opposite, something out of the ordinary. But even with that, I still prefer this grenade out of the three other ones in the arc subclass. The next grenade we have on the list is going to be the arc bolt. This grenade will chain damage to any enemy in the area where it's being deployed. This is a great grenade to use against multiple enemies who are extremely close to each other. And what makes this a really good grenade? Well, in Destiny 2, players tend to group up and engage as a unit. This grenade will punish them for doing that. Keep in mind that when using this grenade and you throw it at your enemy, if your enemy is outside its radius, it will cause no damage. But it does have a very generous radius. Now we have the final grenade for the arc subclass, the flux grenade, what I like to call the meme grenade. In Destiny 1, this grenade used to have a one hit kill ability, but in Destiny 2, it doesn't. Now these grenades are just fun. That's right, guys. I use the word fun. Look, since you can't one hit kill your target, some of the best ways to use this grenade is to either prime your target and then use the flux grenade or start the engagement off with a flux grenade and then clean them up. Either way, you need to be able to deal additional damage. The biggest drawback to this grenade is that you have to expose yourself long enough to acquire your target and aim. Now, moving on into the ability trees, we have Way of the Warrior. This ability tree focuses on one thing, getting up close and personal against your enemy. This ability tree goes hand in hand with anybody who's a shotgun user. Look, if you're a shotgun user and you sometimes clean up your enemies with the melee, then you're really going to like the synergy that comes with the perk combination blow in which getting a kill on an enemy with the melee ability will trigger a health regeneration and increase your melee damage temporarily but that's not the only thing by securing a melee kill this will fully charge your dodge ability again more synergy but it doesn't stop there dodging increases your melee range allowing you to lunge further to strike your enemy also keep in mind that if you're using gambler's dodge when you dodge near an enemy this will fully charge your melee ability as well. Synergy on top of synergy. When I said that this subclass revolves around being up close and personal, I meant it. But heed my warning. You can get some really nasty tunnel vision when using the subclass. Try your best not to get too carried away at securing the kill with a melee. I know it can be fun guys, but the tunnel vision is nasty. As for the super, it's pretty cut and dry compared to the other Arkstrider supers. But something you want to keep in mind when using any of the Arc Strider supers, do not activate your super too far away from your enemy. The Arc Strider super is not similar to the Spectre Blades. Spectre Blade super, you can catch up to an enemy. Arc Strider, you will not, and they will run away from you. But if you use positioning and utilize your radar, you can really catch multiple enemies off guard and secure a lot of kills with the Arc Strider supers. Moving on into the next ability tree, we have Wave the Wind. This is the subclass and ability tree I prefer out of all the Hunter ability trees. Look, there's been a lot of synergy in this video. We had synergy with the Night Stalker. We had synergy with the Golden Gun. But this subclass is no different when it comes to synergy. With the perk Focus Breathing, in which sprinting recharges your dodge ability and increases your sprint speed, this perk alone is great for any exotics that revolve around the Hunter's class ability. Exotics like the Dragon Shadow, the Bombardiers, the Gemini Jester, the list goes on and on. But that's not where it ends. How often do you find yourself critically damaged? Now, a lot of people think that when they're critically damaged, they're out of the gunfight, that they're at a huge disadvantage. But you're not 100% at a disadvantage. With the perk Combat Meditation in which critically wounded melee and grenades recharge dramatically faster. So if you're constantly running and gunning in PvP, then I'm sure you'll find yourself hiding behind cover and recovering. Well, this perk is going to allow you to achieve faster ability charge times 
at the cost of nothing since you were already going to be trying to heal behind cover. Now hunters are known for two things, jumping and dodging. Well with the perk lightning reflexes in which you are harder to kill while dodging, this is a great perk to utilize when trying to peek from out of cover and seeing multiple enemies. You have a higher chance of surviving these engagements with the perk lightning reflexes. Now just like the super before, when I said it is very cut and dry, if you pair the ability lightning reflexes with it, if you try to engage multiple enemies, you now have a higher chance at surviving rather than being team shot to death since you can dodge to close the gap on your enemies. Now let's get into the last ability tree, which is going to be Wave the Current. Now this one has a completely different melee ability than the other two ability trees. That melee ability is going to be Tempest Strike. After sliding, activate your melee ability to unleash a devastating uppercut attack. Look guys, this ability takes some time to get used to, but trust me, once you master it, you can really perform some fun finishers on your enemy. But remember that Tempest Strike isn't a one hit kill ability. Somewhat similar to the Flux Grenade, you either have to deal damage before or after the ability's activation, which can be difficult. Now, one ability that is extremely underrated is the perk Lightning Weave, in which melee hits greatly increase weapon reload speed. Essentially, when you cause melee damage, you activate the perk Lightning Weave, and this perk is active for 5 seconds and can be extended as long as you deal damage to an enemy. Pretty much, I can keep this perk active as long as I'm dealing damage to an enemy, which is great for any weapons that have low reload speed. We're talking about 120 RPM hand cannons, high impact pulse rifles, pretty much any weapon with a slow reload speed can be negated. Now, this super is similar to the other Arc Strider supers, but it comes with the perk Whirlwind Guard. While in your super, if you hold down your block button, you can deflect incoming projectiles. It's pretty simple and can help when going against other supers or a large group of enemies. But what if I told you that deflecting projectiles triples arc staff damage for a short bit? Well, it does. Take a look at this. I deflect a few rounds and I'm able to destroy the Spectra Blades inside the Well of Radiance. It's pretty crazy if you ask me and it can be extremely deadly. As for exotics, I highly recommend you try Raiju's Harness, which allows you to deactivate your super early, which is going to help you save some super energy for your next activation. But let's not forget while using this exotic, when you guard, it doesn't consume extra super energy. Because without this exotic, when you're guarding, you are eating away your super energy. And again, if you're wondering, I would only use this exotic right before you activate your super. In the meantime, you can use any other exotic and swap just before your activation. Personally, at first, I really didn't like this ability tree, but after using it for a few weeks, it really grew on me. It has a small learning curve to it. I would say don't rely on the block so much when it comes to going head to head with another super. It can be really inconsistent, but going against multiple enemies, this is where that super shines. As for Tempest Strike, try getting used to how far you can deal damage. It is pretty generous when it comes to distance, but make sure you use this as a way to clean up an enemy or to start an engagement. The last thing you want to do is to activate this ability and your enemy just quickly gun you down. All right, we finally made it to the very end of the video and I just want to leave you with two don'ts. Please do not do these things because it can lead to unnecessary deaths. Number one, try avoid using your dodge unnecessarily. I know guys, your dodge comes back pretty quickly, but by using it unnecessarily, it becomes a bad habit and when you do need it, you might be caught in an engagement without a way to escape. And number two, and guys, I know I'm really bad at this one too, try avoiding unnecessary jumping. The hunter's jump can be your best weapon on your tool belt, but it can always be your worst enemy as well. It can lead you to some unnecessary deaths. Make sure that if you do plan on jumping, there isn't an enemy waiting for you to pick you off in a distance while you're stuck in the air. But with that, hopefully you all enjoyed the video. Again, huge shout out to Patty Kicks and Shadow for their input. Both of them have YouTube channels and I highly recommend you check them out. Links will be down below. If you're wondering, I have an entire video planned and dedicated for the Hunter Stasis subclass. So that's going to be sometime in the near future. If you enjoyed this video and would love to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. If you want more videos similar to this, you can find them on my Master Series playlist, which is on screen now. That playlist contains videos ranging from mastering hand cannons, mastering movements and abilities for all characters. But with that, I hope you all had a great day and you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys in the next video.